Hi everybody, this is Mr. Folly. Oh no, my hand is short. And welcome to Podcast 1.4. I don't know where we're going to be. I think it's three, nah, it's four. Um, and we're going to learn a bit about the band of stability. Determine a half-life. Determine the age of radioactive substances. And that's it. So let's hop into it. Some nuclei have an unstable proton to neutron ratio. So this is going to be my neutron ratio. This is going to be my proton ratio. Okay. And then they decay into another substance. Okay. So this is the band of stability. Um, you can find out if you're on the band of stability or not by looking at the average. Ooh, look at that crazy line. I love crazy lines. Average mass. So, for example, if I'm looking at uh, boron 11, right? Boron on the periodic table has five protons. Uh, five protons. And if it's boron 11, look at the periodic table, boron's average atomic mass is 10.81. Boron 11 is the most stable. Okay? 10.81 is closest to 11. So let's take a look over here. Uh, number 70. Ooh, I wonder what number 70 is. Let's take a look. Number 70 on my periodic table is everybody's favorite, ytterbium, YB. YB. And it's got 70 protons. Now, on this, 70 protons would have, well, let's see what the average mass of ytterbium is. Average mass of ytterbium is 173.04, so it's 173.04. So that means minus 70 protons. Shh, can I ignore that? And that would give me 103 neutrons. So let's see if that'll plot on here. 100 and what the what? Okay. Now, if I had something like ytterbium um, 190, right? Ytterbium 190 would have 120, would be. 120 neutrons and 70 protons. Here's 70. If I went up to 120, oh no, that's not stable. So that means you're going to be radioactive and you're going to turn into start heading this way to get to the band of stability. So remember the few times that Dorothy got off the yellow brick road? I was like, we need to go back to the yellow brick road, yellow brick road. So sometimes she went too far this way, and oh no, there were the killer trees. And sometimes she was too far this way, and oh, the flying monkeys, no. But she always had to go back to the yellow brick road. Neutrons are like glue. I've enjoyed our bonding time together, son. Me too, Dad. You're super, <laughs> super glue. <laughs> um, neutrons are like glue. Too much glue, and the bond won't stick. Not enough glue and the bond won't work. What do they tell you in elementary school? Just a dot will do you or something like that? I don't even know. This decay occurs in a half-life manner. Now, that's not normal, right? I love me some Oreo cookies. Vanilla Oreo cookies are my personal favorite if you're looking for the teacher gift at the end of the year. Um, and I tend to eat them two at a time. So if I have 30 in there, I go to 28, and then I go to 26, and then I go to 24, and then I burp. And then I go to 22, and you see how that would be linear. This is not a linear decay. Half the radioactive material change per time cycle. So this means what would happen is I would eat half of the box right away. So if there's 30 in a cookie box, I'd go to 15 when I ate it. Then the next time I wouldn't eat at all, I would eat half of what's left, which would be seven. And then I eat half of what's left, and it'd be four. And notice this seven and four, it could go either way. And then half of what's left would be two, right? So that's what happens is you always eat half the box. So that's different, okay? So notice here I started at 80. If it took two to get to 40, to get to 20, it would take two more to get to 10, which is half, right? Take two more, okay? We can find the amount left, the amount in the beginning, and the half-life. The half-life of argon-42 is 28 days. If the sample contained 510 grams, how much would remain after 140 days? How much was present 56 days ago? So let's do this one first. Da, 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 da. How much would remain after 140 days? So what I do is I do a time, oops, an amount. 
So I'm going to erase that and write the word amount where you could probably tell what it is. A-M-O-U-N-T. Okay. So if the sample contained 510 grams, I have 510 grams right now times zero. How much would we, um, how much would remain after 140 days? Okay. So notice the half-life is 28 days. So I'm going to count by 28s. 28, 56. I'm really going to regret not having my calculator. Uh, 28 plus 56 is four. It's going to be 30. Yeah, that's going to be 84. 84 plus 28 is going to be two. So that would be 112. And then plus 28 would be 140. Woo! Okay, adding by 28 is not the easiest thing on earth. The amount I'm gonna, so over here, what I did was I added a half-life. Notice how my half-life is 28 days. Over here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide by two. Half of 510 is 255. Half of 255 is 127.5. Half of 127.5 is hard. Um, is 64. F64 is 32. F32 is 16 grams. 140 days would give me 16 grams. Does that kind of make sense? I hope. I hope. I hope. I hope. I hope. Okay. So the other one. How much was time was present 56 days ago? If we've got an ago one. We're going to start, same thing, time and amount, but my at time, okay, so right now at time zero, right? Well, let's, let's do this. My amount right now is 510. 56 days, so this is zero. This would have been 28 days ago, right? Add a half-life. And it's going to be 56 days ago. So up here, because I'm going up this time, I'm going to double it. So 510 times 2 is 1,020. Times 2 is 20, 40 grams. And that's my ago, right? So do you see how I kind of start at the bottom and I, I'm adding more? So notice how the ago, my amount goes up. And if I'm going forward in time, the half-life is going to keep decaying and getting worse and worse. Florian 21 is half-life fractionally five seconds. Woo! What fraction of the original nuclear would rain after one minute? Okay. So amount and time. Oops, I think I flipped it around before. It doesn't really matter. I just want to be consistent. Time and amount. Clearly, I love my Google image. I don't know where this came from. It's kind of creepy looking, isn't it? So at time zero, my fraction is one every five seconds. I got to go to a minute. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. So just to remind you, as I go down, I add a half-life. And as I go down here, I'm going to divide by two. 45, 50, 55, whoops, 60, and that's one minute, okay? So I'm going to keep dividing it by two. Ooh, now it says fraction, right? So I should be able to do this. One half. Half of a half is one fourth. One eighth. One sixteenth. I'm liking my noises. One thirty second. One 64th. By the way, as I'm making this video, as Genevieve says, I sound like Sal Khan from the Khan Academy. I want to know if she's going to actually find a video for me to compare to. 128 is 1, 256th. Notice this isn't very much left now. 1, 512th. 1, 1,028. 1, 2,056. And then 1, uh oh, that's kind of 4. Thousand. Oh, I'm afraid I'm going to get this wrong. Um, 2056 times 2 is 41. 12. Woo! 
that's you start to get to the point where it's pretty much zero, right? Even though it's not quite zero, it's just pretty much zero. All right. 20 grams of radioactive isotope are present at 1 p.m. And 5 grams remain after 2 p.m. What is the half-life of the isotope? So, amount, time, and a lot of this is the reasoning part of it. So, at time, I'm going to call this zero, right? And I went from 20, and I know as of my amount, it's going to go divide by 2. 10, 5, right? That was three half-lives, right? And that's going to be, I hope you don't mind, I changed it in one hour to 60 minutes. So this took one, two, two half-lives, right? So two half-lives equals 60 minutes. So I'm going to say two half-lives is 2x is 60 minutes. x equals, divide both sides by 2, 30 minutes, right? Zero to 30 to 60. That's my half life. Dun, 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 dun. Carbon dating. Carbon 14 is radioactive. All living things and items made from living things, wool comes from sheep, silk comes from worms, etc., contain carbon 14. Carbon 14's half life is long 5,730 years. That's a lot of years. This means we can date old relics and archaeological finds. Relics are either pieces of old people or pieces of things old people had. My mother was given a relic of a saint. because She's a saint. A headdress from an Incan civilization is found to have one-eighth the carbon-14 of the freshly plucked feathers. How old is the headdress? Remember how we said the half-life is 5,780? Let me make sure I can remember that correctly. 5,730, which is exactly what I said. 5,730 years, okay? So it has one eighth. So again, we've got our amount, time. One eighth, so I start with one, I go to halvesies, I go to fourthsies, I go to eighthsies. Again, divide by two. And every time here, I'm gonna add a half life. So when I start, time is zero. 57.30, uh-oh, double in time, 57.30 times 2 is 11.460. Now, I want to warn you, a lot of times people double. This isn't doubled, it's plusing, right? That means here, I'm not going to double it, I'm going to plus it. 17,000. 190 year old. That's an old headdress. Okay. Fossilized piece of bark. Arr. Fossilized piece of bark contains 1 16th amount of carbon 14 of a living tree. How old is a fossil? Amount. Time. 1 16th. 1 half. Fourth. Eighth. Sixteenth. So I had one, two, three, four. Four half lives. So four times 57.30. So again, I count up the half lives. So half lives, number of half lives times half life equals age. So four times 57.30 is 22,920 years old of bark. Woo! By the way, that's years too. Review. Hey, we're here. Graph of protons and neutrons can indicate stability. You can predict ages and half-lives. Carbon dating can give the ages of items that have organic parts. Remember, bark used to be alive. Headdresses are from, like, leather and feathers. That's it. I said toodles, my friend. Toodles. Oh, toodles.